Hello, welcome to this third video on the indefinite integral. Uh, it'll be introduced in the next video. I wanted to do a real life problem. Um, it's an accident recreation problem. You, you are um, at the scene of an accident trying to recreate what happened, trying to figure out whether the driver is at fault or not. The driver of the car, they, they stepped on the brakes and caused the car to have a constant deceleration was able to be measured at 16 feet per second squared. This produced a skid marks measuring 200 feet before the car came to a stop hitting another vehicle. How fast was the car traveling when the brakes were first applied? Very good question. State troopers, they don't, they don't use calculus to solve it, but this is for you. <laughs> All right. So when you have the acceleration and it's negative, it's deceleration, it's a second derivative. We have position, its derivative is velocity, and the derivative of velocity, acceleration. And so we start off with the acceleration being negative 16. It's a constant. Deceleration, negative. So that's a second derivative. If we find the antiderivative, we'll have the velocity function. And we know how to take the antiderivative of a constant. We throw a, we throw a, a variable on it. In this case, the variable will be t, not x, plus a c. OK. Now, let's uh, set the framework that when the skid began, time t equals 0. Our job is to find the time it takes to get to the end of the skid. We know how long the skid was. We want to know how much time it took to get to the end of the skid. OK. At the end of the skid, what's going on is that velocity is zero. So, and you know, this is assuming a bunch of, you know, um, you know, this is in a vacuum, of course, is what we do for modeling math problems. Uh, nothing else is at, at work here. And so uh, when velocity is zero, we can solve for that. Okay. It doesn't give us an exact time t, it'll give us a time t that depends on c. If t is c over 16, your velocity will be zero. All right, great. So now we do this process again. We're back to at what the velocity is. Uh, oh, I didn't write it out. Sorry about that. Take that velocity and in place of, uh, oh, there it is, the velocity V of T, negative 16 T plus C. And I need the antiderivative of that. Okay, oops, sorry. And so we, uh, T squared over two, put the C, Give it a t, and then we need another variable, so we have d. And so this is very much like what we did in the previous video. When you're given a second derivative, you take the antiderivative once. You have the derivative. You take the antiderivative again. You have the second derivative. But each of those have a constant on them. Just use different letters for the constants. This is the formula for the position at time t. And so at the beginning of the skid, let's call that position zero. So you plug a zero to this and you'll get that, you know, D is equal to zero. So that goes away. And so your position function is negative eight T squared plus CT. And you're supposed to be able to use this now to figure out then um, how fast the car was going when the brakes were first applied. Because then, you know, based off of that, you can say whether it was, you know, if they were at fault. If this is a residential area and you're traveling 60 miles an hour, yeah, they're at fault. But maybe they were traveling 30 miles an hour. So, hmm. so let's find that out. Uh, go to the end of the skid. We talked about the beginning of the skid, where S, uh, S is 0 and T is 0. What about the end of the skid? Uh, at the end of the skid, the, the, time, uh, the, uh, the position is 200. The, the whole skid is 200 feet. And so... Uh, we, we set this position equal to 200, and we know the time of the skid. It took C over 16 seconds for the skid to occur from beginning to end, okay, from the previous work that we did. So we're going to plug this in. We'll have a, we have an equation. It'll be a, a quadratic. We'll solve it for C, and it'll work out nice. We'll have C squared over 16 squared, but it'll be times a negative eight. 
Then we'll have c squared over 60. And it's supposed to be equal to 200. OK. Now, without a calculator, you can't really multiply. You know, So let's just go ahead and take the 8 and turn the 16 down to be a 2. So we have c squared over 32 with a negative on it. c squared over 16. We can put those together. In fact, it won't be a nice, you know, it won't be a, it won't be that bad. Um, it's not like a, a quadratic that we have a constant term and a, a linear term. Uh, we just have a quadratic term. And so we could say, um, basically, we could just take a square root. If you have negative c squared over 32 and positive c squared over 16, those two fractions could be put together. And you really just have negative c squared over, uh, I'm sorry, c squared over 32, positive. So multiply by 32. Take a square root, and wow, that worked out nice. C is 80. These never work out nice. That's great. C is 80. What is C? So what C is, is the velocity when time equals zero. That's what we're looking for. The units are a little weird for us as far as like knowing, you know, what was the person speeding or not because they're in feet per second. But um, that's what it is, 80 feet per second. So we'll have to go to a computer at some point and convert this to miles per hour so you can get an idea, or kilometers hour if you're in, a, in um, another country that uses the metric system. And so here we are, and we're going to get the fact that uh, the conversion factor, plug it in, figure out yeah, this, this person, they were going 54 miles an hour. And so depending on where they're at, we can definitely, with assurance, with the power of calculus, say uh, they were speeding. Or maybe they weren't. If it's on a highway, I would say no. If it's on a residential street, oh, that's a problem. And so anyway, fun question. Using the power of calculus, having a second derivative, working our way back to the function, using the information that we have, and able to sort of recreate and get a good idea, a good estimate at, as how fast the person was going when they applied the brakes. And should they have been going that fast? It's up for debate. All right. In the next video, we'll introduce the indefinite integral, the title of the, the whole series. And, um, and we'll do a bunch of examples. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Uh, my website is calccoach.com. Please uh, comment down below, like, and subscribe. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out to me. I have a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel and a bunch of uh, workbooks for ex uh, with extra midterm level problems for you. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.